Welcome back, you two pipe smokers. It's Spurgeon Piper joining you Wednesday evening. Finally getting a video in. I uh, usually like to have one in on Wednesday morning, but it didn't work that way. Um, running out of times at time to uh, to get one in. By the way, the, if the camera shakes, my cat's in, and she likes to get in the midst of everything like cats do. Uh, so today is a long-awaited Q&A video. Um, I, I started this about a month ago, so about every month I, I'll be doing this, I suppose. Um, you guys brought in some, or uh, sent in some good questions. Some were on email, some were on, in YouTube comments, and, and some of them you didn't ask for them to be in a Q&A, but they're really good questions, or questions that I think others would eventually ask. So, uh, well, without further ado, we'll, we'll get into them. Uh, before we do, real quick. I am smoking the new pipe I got in, my Peterson, the Irish Harp series. Um, it has been smoking quite well. Um, currently, I'm smoking out of it a Peterson Elizabethan mixture, so um, I, I've been really enjoying it. And there is something about this pipe that I will cover in the Q&A, because I think it will be worth, uh, uh, the information will be helpful for some of you. So, let me get into the questions. Um, I'm not going to give you all the names of these. One reason is I don't know the names, or two, uh, they weren't given. Um, maybe because they didn't want the their names given out. So I'll give up just a, only a, a couple of the names that were specified or on YouTube. Uh, so first one I have is someone is, how do I deal with smell on clothes, books, furniture, etc.? Uh, part of this sensor is already in the video I did on the air filter I use or air purifier I use. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, uh, check back on that. Um, I, I do use an air purifier in my when I do smoke in my office, home office. I, I do have an air purifier here, and it takes care of of the smell. Uh, so I use it for both health reasons and smell. Um, and and so it's. It's constantly going, going on. Um, right now it's turned off, but usually I keep it on, and and then it has its uh, oh, what is the proper name for it? I always always forget when I think of it. Uh, the um, the the O2 uh, value of it, uh, where it um, where it reoxygenates the room. Um, so that that helps take care of the the smell. Uh, is, is what I want to get at is it kind of resets the room. Let me just say it that way. Um, and, and so my main, the main thing I do to, to help with, let's just say myself and what's in the room where I'm smoking is to have air purifier. Um, if, if you're in an area like that, you, you're going to need one. Um, even when I smoked without one and I had windows open, it doesn't really do the job if, if you tried. Um, it helps keep most of the smoke out, but you're, you're, you're just going to have lingering smoke. So I, I, I do recommend that you have an air purifier. It will take care of things like that. Uh, as far as clothes, I always have a set of clothes I smoke in. Um, if I'm going to be around someone, I, of course, change. I, I, you know, at the end of the day, I take the shirts off or a shirt off and, uh, in the mornings, I smoke before I start my day, and so when I get done with my smoke, I change my clothes, wash my face, all that good stuff, so uh, I, I don't want that lingering on me. I don't like the smell. I love pipe smell, or pipe, pipe smoke smell. I don't even like the lingering smell of it. It just doesn't smell good. No smoke to me smells good. Lingering. Campfire smoke, what have you. It, it just not a, it's just not a great smell. Um, the only reason I may like it is because I used to be a firefighter, and it kind of gives me a nostalgic feeling, but... Um, I digress. So when it comes to clothes, that's my answer. Books, furniture, uh, things like that. I'm not really caring about my books. I love books. I try to keep care of books. I don't really care if they smell like tobacco necessarily or smoke, though I don't think they really do. And, and I guess it's because of my air purifier. Um, so take that for what you will on, on that. I hope that helps. Um, Karen Eighth asks, uh, I, I read in tobacco reviews that a certain Tobacco has a few rough edges. What does that mean? Also, people talk about a round flavor. So she, that, that's a great question, Karen. Um, partially, I just want to say I don't know. Yeah, that's not helpful. I know. Uh, I, I, 
I don't because it's when it when it comes to to how someone approaches tobacco, how they describe it, it can be in very individualistic, um, and and that's part of the problem, um, especially some of the vernacular or language that's used to describe it. Uh, so when when I think of this, though, however, when I think back of what I smoked and and what I've heard other smoke and describe it and using this language around flavor or it's rough, uh, I, I I can tell you that to me a a rough tobacco is usually a pure Virginia um, or largely a Virginia based blend that is either both either poor quality um, or it's very young or or, or, or new blend or new tobacco if that makes sense uh, I'm, I'm gonna take Orlick Golden Slice for an example uh, well-loved blend but you take a fresh can of Orlick Golden Slice it's going to be a little more rough because the Virginias used in it are quite fresh or green or what have you as it ages that softens um, it loses some of that edginess it's not as uh, prone to, to tongue bites and, and it cools um, it's not as rough when it when it ages um, and so that's one thing you want to keep in mind those leaves with high sugar content which is Virginia uh, they are prone to having to being quite rough, especially if they are lower quality. Um, you'll you'll typically find. So uh, Virginias are known for that. Um, compared to you take things like uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna believe Oriental is more oil based, and I believe Burley is as well. Uh, they are cooler smoking. They're not as high in sugar. Uh, so both age and quality of leaf and mixture of blends helps with this. Uh, you, you're, you're going to be able to avoid this if you get higher quality tobacco leaf, number one. So your over-the-counter stuff is going to be more prone to it automatically. Uh, two, it's having a mixture. Um, so pure Virginia is going to be prone to this. Uh, Virginia with Burley, Virginia with Oriental, Latakia, they're not going to be as prone. They're, they're going to be softened. Uh, or just smoking one of those by itself. You, you're you're going to avoid some of this. Um, and then, of course, age. Age is going to play a big factor factor as well when... Tobacco ages, you're probably going to lose a lot of that edginess. So that's my opinion on it. I, I think most would agree, I believe. Um, um, that, that's how I've heard others describe it. And so I, I, I feel confident in saying it that way. So hopefully that helps. Uh, I had someone else ask, and I don't have a name for it. Uh, what Bible translation do you use? Um, that's a good question, too. And... Uh, so everyday use, uh, what I preach out of, I use the English Standard Version. English Standard Version, it's it's become more popular in the past about decade or so, tw uh, two decades. Uh, I, I really uh, like this translation. I, I believe it sticks well to the original languages, which is the Hebrew and uh, Koine Greek uh, of the manu early manuscripts we have. Um, yet it's very more readable. So it's not as wooden. Um, it's, it's quite easy to read. Uh, however, I do use other other translations. So for instance, in my sermon preparation, uh, not only do I use about, let's just say seven or so English translations, um, I also look at the original Koine Greek if I'm in the New Testament of, uh, of Scripture or the Hebrew, uh, original Hebrew, uh, I'll look at that if, if I'm in the Old Testament uh, preaching out of that. Um, and so I, I'll look at those available and, and then I, I still use those English translations because I like to see one, not just what I think, but what a host of scholars think. And two, a lot of times they can help with um, with the translation um, and, and or maybe describing it better, the word uh, that is given. And, and so I use both in tandem for, for help with there. But if I, if I had to pick just one English translation, it would be English standard version. I think it's very solid. Um, King James is great. It's fine. Um, the New American Standard is probably my second favorite, I would probably say. Um, I, and I tend to use the, stick with those that are more literal, uh, meaning they're word for word of the original languages and not those that are more dynamic or take liberties of, of, different, of the different phrasing and, and wording of the original languages. Now, what, uh, what did I mean by that? Um, examples would be like the New Living Translation, if you're familiar with that. Um, definitely the message. I, I would not even consider that it as an option, to be honest with you. 
Um, the NIV is not is fine. I, I grew up with the NIV, so I had no issues with it. But those are more dynamic. They usually call it where they're uh, uh, thought for thoughts. They're they're going to take some liberty in describing things, make it water it down. Maybe I don't want to be. That sounds wrong, and I don't I don't I want to be courteous to those who use it. But uh, they're they're not they're not going to be as word for word of the original translations, and that's what I want. So um, so anyway, hope that answers that question for you. Uh, last one, I think, is by John Smith. John Smith asks, how do you break in a pipe? Uh, well, I'm glad you answered that, and it, currently it's it's quite uh, applicable uh, with the pipe I get in. Excuse me. Um, so I just got in this pipe this past week, uh, this Peterson. And uh, and so I'm, I'm kind of going through this break in. So what does it look like? How do you break in a pipe? And this is one of those wonderful answers of it kind of depends. Uh, I know it doesn't really help, but there's experts in the pipe world who I've seen or heard disagree on this. Some say uh, smoke a half a bowl. Right when you start, don't, don't smoke a full bowl. Smoke a half a bowl. That way you build a cake more on the bottom, which it's the most important place to, to, to build a cake. Uh, which the cake is a lining of, of carbon inside the bowl, by the way. That's helpful. It's important. You want to build a cake eventually. It helps protect your pipe. So they'll say start there. Uh, some will even add to that. Say, hey, uh, you know, run honey around the inside of the bowl, and that will help build the carbon cake. Uh, the first 20 bowls smoke only a half a bowl. Uh, some say, no, don't worry about it. Just smoke full bowl. Some say three quarters of a bowl. Um different things like that so what do i do i just smoke normally and smoke the bowl uh or a full bowl I, I smoke like it's a a fairly old pipe um when it when it comes to smoking a full bowl i mean that that's what i do i don't do any half bowls i have done it um uh, maybe it's best to do it i'm not going to argue that i just don't and i've it's been okay i i've had pipes that i've done that with multiple ones and i've built up solid cakes on them and i haven't had any burnouts or uh, hot spots necessarily or anything like that and so it's it's worked uh one thing i do want to stress which is why i'm glad the answer was brought up is clean your pipe when you get it uh, I, I really encourage you to uh, especially if it's new uh, well no whether it's new or not um, even if it's old you definitely want to as well but even when it's new you wouldn't think you would have to but let me let you know or tell you why um I experienced with this one because I forgot to do it. So I just smoked a, I got it in uh, the next day or two days later, I smoked a, a full bowl and I realized the, the, the tobacco tasted a little wooden, woody. Um, now some tobaccos have a woody flavor, but this is like literally woody, like I'm smoking wood. Um, and I ran a, a uh, pipe cleaner in there and I pulled it out and sure enough, there was some like shavings material left of, of the briar wood uh, and, and so that then it dawned on me I should I knew better I should have cleaned it before I smoked it so let me encourage you to uh, use some pipe cleaners use some solution and just run a couple of pipe cleaners in there get out the gunk or, or the the remaining uh, material that was left when it was drilled and, and created uh, that's something we don't often think about so I, I hope that answers your question and i think guys that is it i don't see anything else right now on my list so uh, i hope that was helpful and and if you have any more questions feel free to email me whether you want them read out loud or not um, i have some of you who send emails and you don't want no one else to know about and that's fine i'm happy with that and you can ask any questions um, about personally me pipes theology whatever i'm, I'm pretty open I, I don't mind touching on whatever. So, uh, guys, I hope you all have a great week. I'm going to try to get in a video at the end here uh, of this week and try to stay up with at least two and sometimes three a week, depending on my schedule. So it, it, it's not going to always be consistent, especially with all this stuff going on in the world. But um, that's that's my hope and plan. And so I hope you guys have a blessed week, and we will talk to you all soon.